Hey, 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 scrappy people. Tracy Reed here today with a sort of tutorial process video on how to use digital templates with your cutting machine to make paper layouts. I've done similar videos to this before and I'm going to uh, sort of link those in, I'm linking the blog post to this specific page in the description box below. And in the blog post are more tutorials on how to do this. They might uh, cover more in depth. They might be a little bit different. They might make it so that you can use your paper products. There's a whole array of ways to use templates with your uh, paper scrapbooking. And so I wanted to talk about that. So I scrapbook in life crafted size, which means it's eight uh, 8.25 by five. So I have to change this template to fit 8.25 by five before I do anything else. So I have resized it to 10 inches across and 8.25 inches. Uh, I adjusted the canvas size to 8.25 inches. And so now it is the correct size for my scrapbooking. Then I deleted the title and journaling placeholders. And the first thing that I want to do is put my photos that I'm going to be using for this page onto the canvas. At first I was going to clip the photo to the photo spot. Then I decided that they didn't have to be the same dimensions because it didn't really fit the way that my um, photos were taken. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the wall out of this photo that's all that white space uh, by using my lasso tool my pol pol polygon lasso to tool which gives me straight edges and then I'm going to copy and paste my other photos onto this page as well just kind of putting them where the photo spots are on the page and not bothering to use the photo spots as a clipping mask. So I'm going to copy and paste this one onto my page as well, resize it, put it up here. So I'm just using this template as a, the, when you use templates for paper scrapbooking, you're basically using them as cutting files. And that's how I'm approaching this page is everything, all the paper spots, all of the rings and the circles on this page, I am just using them as cutouts for my silhouette. So I will show you how to take them into my silhouette here when I'm done building this layout, but I'm going to build this layout entirely in Photoshop before I take it into the real world and, uh, recreate it, recreate what I've done in Photoshop. So now I need to, I'm adjusting the rings just to make everything fit a little bit better in this orientation. And now I need to add papers to all of these paper strips and rings and circles on this page. So I'm just going to drag and drop this one for the background, but I'm going to change this one in a minute. Um, and then I'm going to start adding the papers to all of the paper spots. So this one's going to go over this big circle. I use it as a clipping mask and then I add all of the rest of the papers as well. And now I'm going to add in, the, or I'm going to change out the background paper to something a little bit more colorful. I thought I would want something more plain in the background for everything that's happening here, but the rainbow wood grain really makes a lot more sense. Plus it doesn't clash with that green heart paper like the blue uh, paper did as far as like tone on tone. The green and the blue are very similar. So if you pile them on top of each other, they can um, sort of blend in together and sort of clash just a little bit. So I've merged all of my paper layers to their shape layers that they were clipped to and now I have created my background and I'm ready to start rearranging things and adding in some embellishments. So I start with the digital kit and pull some of the things from the digital kit that are not available on the sticker sheet. Like I've always said, the digital kit embellishments are also fully printable. They're just meant for digital scrapbooking, so they do not come on print sheets. You can make your own print sheets, or you can do what I'm doing here and create a layout in Photoshop, then print it layer by layer and reassemble it, or you can just you know, digital scrapbook it and print the whole thing out as one big layout as well. So one of the advantages of building a layout in Photoshop is getting to use the digital mixed media from the collection. So I'm going to add some of this paint here to just add a little bit more of a fun stripe to the page. And I'm also going to use these layered um, frames, Polaroid frames from the digital kit around the artwork. I think it, um, sort of gives a fun artsy, <laughs> artsy texture to the 
layout itself plus it sort of delineates between this is a photo of art and this is a photo of us not that you can't tell that physically it just you know gives you that mental delineation between um, almost like you know I had taken the Polaroids in the museum and then put them on this layout I wanted to use some of these flowers from the collection as well they have some nice folded up texture that I will repeat once I get into the real world too admit one of course is perfect for a museum so I got two of those that I'm gonna put underneath my photo then I'm just scrolling through seeing if there's anything else I want to add that is not on the sticker sheet so I'm gonna go to the sticker sheet instead go through and add in some of these arrows as well as some signs and some postage stamps I like the pop of color that these arrows give over the more neutral papers in the foreground and the more neutral like Polaroid frames so I'm just going to add those in lots of repeating rainbows in this page between the background the arrows and even the paint that I chose I wanted to use this map but we were in Tennessee not Africa so it has to stick out the side here for my own little bit of OCD so that you can see the United States and not Africa I like this detour ahead because it was, was kind of a detour from our main mission which was the concert that day we decided to kill some time at the art gallery instead well, not instead before then I want to add one of these labels with where we were I just added some text to the label and then merged it all together so that I can move it as one piece and it's gonna go down here in this corner now again me scrapbooking this in Photoshop um, beforehand it's just basically telling me where I'm gonna put things when I have everything print and cut it gives me a couple advantages one is I can resize things plus it is easier to move things around in Photoshop because there's no adhesive and move things back and forth tilt them at specific angles and just have a little bit more fun than it is in paper so I'm gonna add in my journaling directly to the background of this page so I have to make it fit around all of these embellishments that I already have here I'm gonna make it white as well but I have to work with the um, embellishments first so I'm going to fix the spacing and take out some superfluous words and some superfluous you know indentation and paragraphs just to make it all fit around that stamp and also um, not go through to the other side of the page turned it white so it just blends in real nicely now I'm going to add in my title with the um, and with the alpha from the collection. I love this alpha. It's nice and neutral, but it's a map, so it is themed really cute. I'm going to overlap my letters so that I can print and cut them all as one piece instead of having to put this back together letter by letter. I'm going to turn off the shadow, merge them together, and turn the shadow back on just so that I can... The shadows are only so that I can see better in Photoshop. I'll turn off all the shadows before I go to print and cut. Okay, so now I'm getting towards the end here. I'm going to go back through the embellishments. These are the stickers just to make sure that I've got everything that I want here. I'm going to be really fussy about the title, of course. And now it is time to print and cut. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to merge the background together. Well, actually, I'm going to duplicate the whole thing, and then I'm going to merge the background together. I duplicate the whole thing so that I don't mess up the original and all of this merging and moving things around doesn't mess up my composition. So I merged the background so it's ready to be print already. Then I'm gonna create two different cut files, both at an eight and a half by 11. One is going to be initially for the papers and the other one is going to be for the embellishments. And this is just basically to get them to be saved as a PNG file so that I can then go into Silhouette and change things around. So I just don't want things to be overlapping. Um, I want things to fit together on the page, but this won't be my final composition for printing and cutting because once I get into um, silhouette, I will go ahead and rearrange things to maximize the amount of paper or maximize the amount of space I use on my paper and minimize the amount of waste. So I'm just going to move these around, fill in the blank spaces. They don't have to be, um, super far apart they can be nice and close together with the silhouette but they can't be overlapping otherwise the silhouette will print and cut it as one piece the last thing that i'm going to do is rotate this so that i can print it and then i'm going to create a separate cut file for the photos themselves because they will be printed on glossy photo paper so i want to make sure that they don't get 
put on the other sheets. I'm going to save them as PNG files so that the silhouette can easily read them for cut lines. And then I will open them up in that program and rearrange things. So I'm going to make sure that these are eight and a half by 11 canvases. And then I'm going to turn on the registration marks and turn them down to as small as they can go. Then I will do the same for this one. And then I will spend time rearranging, which I will do off camera because it's just a lot of being super fussy and I'll send them through my silhouette and then I will take you to the real world. All right, so everything is cut out, printed and cut. Now it is just a matter of reassembling it, um, just like it looks on the computer, plus adding, you know, some paper flare to it. I printed out, or I cut out a bunch of the flowers so that you can see how they're layered um, digitally. So I wanna add some them together and sort of layer them physically too, just to give them that extra little pop that they're missing in real life. So I'm just going to layer some together like this and see what else I want to add from there. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to go through this a little faster than normal because it's just reassembling what I already did in Photoshop. I do add some touches here and there, like inking the edges of some of these pieces. But basically what I'm doing here is I have my files still open in Photoshop and I'm just looking back and forth, making sure that everything gets put down in the right layer order and in the right place so that I can recreate what I did in Photoshop. The main, um, area of importance for this is actually around that journaling up there and I mess it up at first and I have to pull everything that I put down up again so that uh, I can make sure that I don't cover up my journaling but we'll get there in a second. So I'm just going to make sure that they are at the right level. You can see me, well I can see me because I know what I'm doing but I'm looking over my shoulder at my computer making sure everything goes in the right place. I'm going to use some liquid glue for these rings because they're nice and thin. But man, I love my silhouette for cutting out shapes like this. I don't have to have 50 million punches. I don't have to, uh, you know, store all of this. The silhouette can just, you know, cut out these rings from my template perfectly. I'm going to pop this photo up on uh, foam tape, which I struggle with here. Uh, foam tape just so it has a little bit of pop off the page and also so that it makes it so I can put things underneath the edges really easily. One thing about printing at home is that the paper, because it's so porous to accept the ink, it's also really porous for the adhesive. So uh, once things are down on home printed paper, uh, they're down. So I'm just making sure <laughs> that everything goes down correctly except for of course this ring which I'm just now realizing oh man I put it uh, I should have put it down first I did not we're gonna have to go over the paper strips which is fine but it cuts off that pink paper strip in a really annoying way which ends up getting up mostly covered so I guess it's not that big of a deal but uh, it still kind of annoyed me in the moment I had two of these photos printed and I think I was supposed to use the smaller one and this is the where it kind of went wrong uh, as far as the positioning around that journaling. Um, but the, the, the bigger one looked better. So <laughs> I went with the bigger one, consequences be darned. And we're just gonna, we're gonna go with it. I have all of these little holes that I need to pop out from the top of this notebook paper. So I'm just doing that real quick before I put it down with the photo. Going to use adhesive directly on the back of that which will kind of adhere it to the photo and then i'm just going to put adhesive down on the whole thing which will adhere it all to the background really easy i'm going to repeat the process with the other side i'm just pulling things off of my silhouette mat rather than you know pulling them all off at first and then having to find them again because i tend to lose things <laughs> i'm pulling them all off the mat one at a time, piece by piece. I forgot that this needed to go underneath and then I totally ignore my journaling at the top here, which it was mostly okay, but then I tried to put in the um, stamp eventually and the stamp would not fit, so that was where the problem came in. So I'm gonna put this title down and now I can work on all of the embellishments. 
I decided to keep this go see do as part of its cutout so that I can easily place it where it goes on the paper on the, on the layout um, just like it was supposed to except it just it did not want to come out so it kind of kind of was a fail but that was just because the cut file was all stuck together still there was like pieces that were too hard to pop out um, but it still it still mostly worked. So I've got this go see do down. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create multiple layers with these flowers. I printed out multiple flowers and I'm going to layer them together and sort of rough up the edges so that they have lots of pop off of the page. I will also pop them up on the foam tape just to give them a little height too. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that stapler and staple them down in the middle because I felt like they were a little bit loose off the page and it didn't quite work right. Um, well, as far as adhesive. And I think that was just because I folded the adhesive and so it wasn't really that stable. I probably gave it a little bit too much height, but I was really going for the gold as far as height goes. So it makes sense. So I always just take it a little too far. That's okay. So then I'm gonna stick down the layers on this one. Of course the uh, foam tape was folded up and messy now, so I'm gonna fix it. Then I'm going to start building up the layers on the page with all of these cute little flowers. They're roughed up digitally and there's some shadowing and some folded edges. So I just wanted to add to that folded edge sort of feel and create a few layers. And I think that that gives it some fun texture on the page and makes it just a little bit more interesting. All right, so that is about it for this video. I'm gonna staple these down and then call it good. If you enjoyed it, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you. If you don't already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm at Tracy M. Reed. I'd love to see you over there as well. There's a link in the description box below to um, more layouts using these bottom up templates and they don't do it in Photoshop. They, or actually they do, but uh, there is another one by Allie that is done. She just adapted the bottoms up to paper. Um, so you can see another way to do it. There's also a bunch of links in that blog post to more videos like this with more tutorials. And so that's in the description box and I will see you next time. All right. Thank you.